the seat is only good for about an hour for me. I'm six foot two, 180. Just out of just about an hour, I start getting a lot of pain, a lot of pressure points. One of the first things I did after getting my 2018 Honda Goldwing was to ride the bike down to Bryan College Station to have John Conley rebuild my seat. It just wasn't comfortable enough. Now, a lot of you have watched my video, but I'm going to replay it for you with some new updated information. Okay, I'm here with John at Bike Solutions, and we're going to take the seat off this 2018 and let him work his magic. What a lot of people talk about on the stock seat, um, primarily the thing that really gets them, and I want to talk about this while it's still in a stock configuration. If you notice, it's real, it's perfectly flat. And as I sit there and push on it, there's really not much give to it at all. And the other thing that really bothers a lot of people, um, I call it the large option. And anything that involves modifying this back here is uh, pricing under the large. But if you feel, if you take your hands and feel down here, you're gonna feel a lip that runs right along this edge. And you can even see when I push down up against the backrest, that lip right there. As you're sitting up against the backrest, you come down and you actually sit right on that lip and that bothers a whole lot of people. Literally 80% of the seats that I've been modifying have had that back um, section removed. And the other thing that I can do uh, while I'm back here, you may notice when you end up, we'll take this final cover off and let you take a look at it. Okay. But there's a heater element that runs all the way through here, which makes things rather difficult if you go to uh, modify it. But there's a lip right here where this comes around and then it actually goes in. And so the one option is just cutting this bottom out. And the other option is cutting this down along the top where I bring it back to the seam. And by pushing that back a little bit, that allows the person to go back about an inch. And they're okay. gonna gain about an inch. And uh, when they sit on the bike, they'll notice that their knees are back a little bit further from the ferry. Now the on the, uh, the co-rider seat, We'll talk about this as far as the stock trim. Everyone can look at their bike and pretty much see that you know, there's literally nothing here. In fact, if I push down on the side here, you can actually feel the pan. There's only about an inch wow. of material separating you from the plastic. So how do I compare to them versus other companies? One, I'm still using the existing factory seat for a lot of things. Um, you have the waterproofing. Uh, so if you go to an aftermarket cover where it's stitched, uh, you lose the waterproofing. I still have retain the same waterproofing as the original seat. I retain the look of the original seat and uh, if you're only needing a driver side done because you don't have a co-rider, I can repair that seat and modify that seat for $300 versus $1,500 or $1,000 or whatever the aftermarket seat. So right. I can provide a level of comfort uh, at a much cheaper alternative than a full custom seat and if you buy a full custom you have to make sure the co-writer is just as happy as you are because they may not be. I primarily concentrated on gold wings uh, because that's what I've always driven. Um, so there's a significant investment in me you know I've got to go buy a bike sure. put a couple thousand miles on it on the factory seat to find out what issues if any there are then develop a solution for that so I pretty much stuck to the gold wings uh, it's been a good market not only that um, I was still having a full-time job up until this year. Um, I just retired after 26 years in the Army. This seat mod that I'm doing um, comes as a result of my experience on my own Goldwing. I bought a 2018 wing. I, like everyone else, hated the seat, and I found a way to fix it. So the seat work that I'm doing has been road tested several thousand miles. It took about five months. Um, well, it's about four months to uh, come up with a solution for this. Several different trial and errors, more error than anything. A lot of times if you just put a pad on here, uh, which is what some upholstery companies would do, um, foam doesn't last forever. And even if you put like gel pads or things on there, it's kind of like putting asphalt over concrete. Right. It's different, but the problem is you have to have something provide the durability, the long life, provide the give and the comfort that the person's looking for and that are some of the design problems with this seat is because you just have nothing to work with. On the previous model 1800 <coughs> you had about five inches of foam actually about four inches uh, complete 
and so you had a lot of depth and things that you could work with. Also on the 1800 you had uh, the side pieces that came around the front and if a person was looking to get closer to the ground I could cut those down make those um, extend that narrow section back and that would allow the person to get better footing. I get numerous calls from people um, and emails asking me how to make the seat lower, um, how to make it narrower, <clears throat> and the fact is I don't have a solution for that yet simply because as we, after I take the cover off I'll show you there's just nothing there to work with. Okay. Now let's take a look underneath here and see what we got. So, that's what you're sitting on. Uh, this black piece right here is actually a heater element. Okay. Um, and you've got one in the back as well that comes up on both sides. So, you got your electricity uh, cord that runs through the bottom. But this whole element is for the passenger seat. You've got one for the driver's seat. And behind this piece of foam, you have a heater element as well that runs underneath the seat and the electrical is over here on this side. Okay. So, again, let's take a look at this for a little bit for the people that are looking for better footing or trying to get um, something narrower. You can see I'm pushing all the way down to the pan. Yep. That's it. And so to be able to do this seat to where it looks factory, it comes out perfectly smooth, uh, does present a challenge. And if you're taking it to your local upholstery guy, um, anything they cut is going to show through. Uh, and to where if you're even thinking about taking it and cutting down the sides or doing anything, anything you do to the seat, it's going to come glaring through the vinyl. And so that creates one of the design problems. Now if we take a look at this back, you can see this foam area. You can actually take your finger and you can feel that lip right there. Oh yeah. That's the lip that we're talking about. But the problem here is this whole heater element has to be removed in order to get that. So if somebody's thinking, well hey this is great, I'll just pull the cover and cut that. No, you have no. a heater element that wraps along the face and wraps all the way underneath that cover there. So the only way to modify that is to completely remove this heater element, do the modification, and then put the heater element back in a way that not one thing throws through the vinyl. It has to be perfect every time. And that does present some challenges, but since I've been doing this since 2004, I actually know how to do that. Um, you can see here, this is, I mean, wow. it, there's nothing there. It's literally... Like an inch. Yeah, that's it. Wow. And that's why a lot of people are having issues with this passenger seat, is the fact that there's absolutely nothing there. Is there any difference in the $999 seat, the option? The I have had a customer talk me and talk me about that, and from what I understand, it's the exact same foam, exact same material. The only difference is uh, they increase the area back here to where they're making this backrest taller. Because they're actually bringing this up and present, uh, making a bigger backrest. I believe that the center sections are exactly the same. I believe the foam is exactly the same. Uh, the feedback I got from one guy who actually bought the aftermarket seat trying to find a more comfortable ride, it, it didn't provide him the relief that he was looking for. One of the best things about my business is that I can modify just an individual section of the seat. So instead of buying a complete custom seat, I mean for 300 bucks, I can redo just the driver's seat. Right. Leave the back seat alone, and so if you never have a co-rider, you don't have to pay all the extra money for a back seat. So if somebody's looking for, I do a lot of seats where it's just the driver, I do some where it's the driver and the passenger, I do some where it's everything, and the price is based on the individual items that they need. Do the heater elements still work after it's modified? Yes. In fact, when I'm done with this seat, um, we'll have some additional padding on top, but before I put that on there, it looks exactly like this. So here I am at Bike Solutions, um, getting my Wingsoft seat upgrade, and you saw part of the stuff where he's taking the seat apart, but now he's taking the seat back to his laboratory to do his magic, which uh, he doesn't allow to be filmed, which I don't blame him for that. So 
soon a new seat will emerge out here and we'll show you all the changes and uh, have a chance to test it out when I ride back to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. Here we go. Wow, new seat. That quick. Good. Now you can see that it's been done. And uh, I get a lot of people say, you know, what does the seat look like after it's been done? Um, it looks, if you didn't know something was done, you would still think it's a stock seat. Yep. And that's one of the nice things about the work I do because I like the look of the stock seat. A lot of people do. It still has the original waterproofing of the stock seat, but you can see that lip is gone. Yep. And so what that's actually going to do is it's going to allow you to sit up against this backrest more. And so that will move you back slightly. Um, but it all comes together. You can see there's no wrinkles. There's no boulder that looks exactly like it would have. Yeah, it, looks it, it looks like it could have come out of the factory yeah, this way. Yeah, looks amazing. And you can see on the back here how this has been raised up. Uh, there's additional material. So this has all been completely redone here. And now you actually have something that you can oh, yeah. cush and you sink you into. You can't even get down to the pan. Hold no. On. So the first time you've never sat on a seat before. First time. Oh yeah, I can already tell the difference. Oh, you kind of sit down in it. Yeah. You kind of yeah. feel. Yeah, you really feel it. You sit down in it. You also sit back a little you bit more, down, so you, you feel like back. feel it more up against your back. Yeah. You don't feel that pressure on the tailbone. And, um, on my new modified seat from Bike Solutions. Um, all I can say is this is not even close to the stock Honda seat. It is so much more comfortable. Like I say, I've been riding an hour and a half. Uh, no pain. Uh, I couldn't go more than an hour uh, on the stock seat before I had to pull over and walk around and I, I even was using a cushion yesterday uh, on top of the seat, and even with the cushion, uh, I was lucky to be able to go more than an hour and a half. And I've already gone an hour and a half this morning with uh, the rebuilt seat, and um, it's quite a difference. Right now, as I sit on this bike with this rebuilt seat, I feel like this bike is more comfortable were certainly as comfortable as my 2012 was on the highway. You know, I had uh, John rebuild the seat on my 2007 Goldwing, uh, and it made a huge difference. So when it came time, when I realized I was going to have to do something with this seat, uh, you know, Bike Solutions was the first, the first place I looked to because. Uh, he knows Goldwing seats.